Welcome. Welcome, everyone. This is another episode of AA Illustrates. Uh, I am Micah Smith. I'll be the host for this week. And this week, we're going to be talking about the Control Room API and what it is and why you should care. And so we're going to talk about some of the resources available to learn more about the Control Room API, where you might actually want to use the Control Room API yourself. And then we'll also look at how you can set it up and test against your own Control Room API to test some different endpoints, see how things are working, and then talk creatively about how you can maybe solve different problems using this Control Room API. So first off, what is AA Illustrates? Uh, AA Illustrates is an episodic series where those interested in robotic process automation can come and ask questions, have questions answered, uh, learn more about automation anywhere. Uh, again, this content is designed for the benefit of you. So if there's stuff that you wanna learn that we haven't covered yet, Put it in the chat, put it in the comments, uh, send us a note on uh, any of our social channels. Let us know what kind of content you're interested in. Uh, this specific session came about as a result of a survey we did on uh, LinkedIn. So participate in those. When you see those kind of surveys, when you see people asking for the stuff you wanna learn, let us know. We'll definitely make that kind of content uh, and we'll make it for you. And, and so we wanna make sure that these are as effective uh, for you as possible and a useful tool for you as you go about uh, learning automation anywhere. So who am I? Uh, my name is Micah Smith. I'm a developer evangelist here at Automation Anywhere. I am a former COE lead for a robotics program at a Fortune 100 financial services company. And now I'm here at Automation Anywhere. So I am an RPA and document imaging enthusiast. I've created lots of fun and random bots from automating on Android to fighting in Mike Tyson's punch out to buying cars. And so I write articles, I create videos, um, but I'm really passionate about getting people excited and as excited as I am about RPA. And so, so that's really the, uh, the delta behind everything that I'm doing. For this week, we're gonna talk about what is an API. We're going to talk about the Control Room API. We're gonna look at how we can understand how to use the Control Room API and some resources that are available for you. And then we'll do a hands-on interactive demo I want you to participate in this as well. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps on how to get set up and how to get tested with it. Um, a lot of people are really surprised at the functionality of the Control Room API. They didn't know about it. They didn't see anything about it. And so uh, this is really a session that I'm excited about because I want people to be able to understand what's possible and start to explore how they might integrate the Control Room API with some of their other uh, on-premise applications. So. Taking a step back, what is an API in general, right? Before we even start to talk about the control room API, an API is an application programming interface that receives requests, does some kind of action, whether that's validating data that was a part of the request or just responding, and then sends that response back to me. And so that action could be fetching data, it could be doing a database lookup, it could be doing some manipulation. I might pass in a bunch of text and it passes me back an analysis of that text. So there's lots of different APIs that are available. Um, an example of an API, you log into linkedin.com, right? Your browser, which is the client, sends that request to LinkedIn's API. Your browser receives that response from the API, interprets the response, and then displays the result as a web page. That's a super simple example, uh, but that's technically an API request. Now, when we talk about APIs in Automation Anywhere, there's technically two sides of that. The first is the kind of REST web services command package that's available, and you can use that in A2019 to call out to other APIs. You could do that with the Control Room API as well, um, but you could you know, do currency conversion. You could uh, do an OCR on the fly, right? So there's lots of different APIs that you could use with the REST web services. And, that, and that's really open to, to anything, right? You could call Azure web services, you could call Google web services, you could call services that you've created in your own organization. And, and that would allow you to consume and make use of those different services. The other side of that that we're gonna talk about specifically today um, is the Control Room API. And the Control Room API is a series of endpoints that are available to you as a developer to be able to consume on your own control room. So the Automation Anywhere control room provides several uh, public API endpoints which allow you to control, manage, uh, update, download from your Automation Anywhere environment. This API includes a lot of the same functions that you would actually use within the control room. So when we think about user management, 
uh, when we think about creating and reviewing credentials and updating attributes and stuff like that, uh, even deploying bots, all of that is possible through the Control Room API. And so I want to walk you through some of that so that we can kind of get a, a foundation of what's possible with this API and how we can use it. So there's several resources that are available to learn more about the Control Room API. I'm going to walk you through two that are well known right now, and then I'll introduce you to a third. So the first is the Docs portal, and this is located at docs.automationanywhere.com. And I'll actually bring that up here. Give me one second. And so here we can see the documentation for the Control Room API. So if we just type in Control Room API, we see a bunch of API endpoints. Uh, let's go to Bot Execution Orchestrator. Now you see this one is A2019. If I come over here, I can see the Enterprise Control Room APIs. So this lists most all of the endpoints for the Control Room API. And this allows me to get some more information about these, right? So if I was concerned about authenticating via the API, I could come here and understand a little bit more about how that body is supposed to work and how I would make that request and what I should expect as a response from that request. So this is one good way to learn more about the Control Room API um, and a good way for you to come and see some examples of you know, kind of the explanation of why you're doing different things and some examples of some um, sample bodies that you can use um, as you're making requests to the Control Room API. So that's a really helpful uh, resource. So you can see a lot of those pre-filled examples on the API. There's good documentation on most of the endpoints. Uh, it's a good reference and uh, I, I use it quite a bit and I would encourage you to take a look at that as well. The second resource is Swagger, and a lot of people didn't actually know that this is available to them, so let me bring this one up as well. I'm going to bring this up on Community Edition, since everyone will have access to that. And this is what that looks like. And so, just real quick, uh, it's your control room URL, forward slash Swagger, forward slash at the end, okay? And that will get you to the Swagger endpoint for your control room. And it has a listing of all the public control room API endpoints. It displays the type of request as well as the expected format of the request for the body. Uh, and it'll also show you the expected response and some different responses. Like if you get an error, it'll show you some of those sample errors and how you can resolve it. You can also test making calls to the Control Room API directly from your browser. So if we take a look at this, they're divided up into groupings, right? So here's the authentication API. And here we can see I'm either using HTTP or HTTPS. Again, depending on your environment, you might need to switch that, but most likely you should be using HTTPS. When I need to authenticate, for example, right, I could come in here, I could fill in my username and my password, I could leave out the API key, uh, that's optional depending on how I'm doing my login. But if I hit try it out here, here it'll let me actually modify that body so I can go through and fill this stuff out. I'm not gonna fill this out because I've got this set up for another environment right now, but you could fill this out with your username and password. You could hit execute. It would return to you a token as a string as well as some other parameters about your username. And then you could take that um, token and you could use that to authenticate as you make calls to some of these other endpoints. So if I came over here and wanted to reference a credential vault, um, I would hit authorize. I would fill in my token, and then I could use that token as I make calls to these other endpoints. So if I wanted to pull back a list of credentials or create a new credential, um, that token would be used. So I do have to make sure that I hit that token uh, or hit that authentication endpoint first so I can get the token, then I can start making those calls for um, the other API endpoints. So those are the two kind of well-established uh, resources for learning more about the Control Room API. I've created a third that I'd like to introduce today. And this is through the Postman collection. And so uh, if you're not familiar with Postman, Postman is a tool that allows you to test and debug and play around with and even document um, different APIs. And so when I'm building a bot, for instance, um, I might go and actually use the API endpoints that I plan to call in the bot in Postman first, just so I can understand 
A, do I have the, the, the format of the body correct? And is the request going through successfully? And B, what does that response look like? Because I'm gonna to have to parse that most likely as a part of my bot, right? To be able to pull back values or to send values correctly. And so I need to make sure that I understand the exact format for that body of the request and then also what that response looks like. And so I'll use Postman for pretty much all of my bot builds that includes some other API. And so this is a great tool. If you're not using it right now, I'd strongly encourage you to. Uh, it's free, I think it's like a freemium product. There's, there's a way to subscribe to it, but I've never actually uh, paid for anything. So um, I would encourage you to check out Postman if you haven't already. For the purposes of this session, we're gonna be using Postman. So we've got 45 control room endpoints uh, that are set up in Postman already. And we're gonna see how easy it is to be able to authenticate, but then make other calls to play around with the control room endpoints. The test scripts are already included so that the auth key doesn't have to be copied and pasted from one call to another. So I'll show you that here in a second. There's also sample calls for each of these endpoints, as well as links to Swagger documentation and the docs portal. So if you want some more context about what exactly this endpoint is doing, it's really easy to get that. So I would encourage you to participate with me in this next part. I'm gonna set this up from start to finish and we'll play around with it and test it. Um, there is a URL in the chat or in the, uh, in the comments and description of the video here. So I'd encourage you to check that out. What we're gonna do, sorry, let me maximize this again. What we're gonna do is we're gonna import the Postman collection we're gonna set up our environment and I'll show you how we do that. And then we're gonna test some of those endpoints to make sure everything's working, okay? You can do a lot of this on the community edition. You can't do all of it, unfortunately, because of the, the permissions that you have in community edition versus enterprise. If you have enterprise, I would encourage you to test it with not only maybe your own bot creator account, but then also an admin account if you have access to one or a bot runner, just so you can kind of understand the context that you have access to. Um, in the uh, API endpoints. And so really as a, as a kind of safe rule of thumb, it's really similar to the access that you have using the control room uh, UI itself. So if you don't have access to see the admin stuff in the control room, you're not gonna have access through the API either, right? So just use that as a rule of thumb when you're thinking about what user you should be using for context. All right, so I'm gonna open up a virtual machine here and let's maximize that guy, cool. That's all working. So I've already installed Postman, and uh, if you have not yet, there is a, a link at getpostman.com. You'll be able to install Postman. Um, they have it for OS X and Windows, and I think 32-bit Windows too. So um, when you've downloaded it and when you've opened it up, it'll look something like this. This is my workspace. Right now, my workspace is totally empty, right? There's no collections. Uh, I have the default launch pad here and then I don't have an environment set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this link that is in the description here, and I'm gonna copy it on this screen real quick, okay? Once you've got that URL copied, what you wanna do is hit import. And with import, you have the ability to import a collection. Uh, I think you can also import an environment, but I'm gonna go up here to link. I'm gonna click on the link button, and I'll paste in the URL, okay? So again, you don't necessarily have to watch it off of my screen. Uh, this URL will be in the description of the video, so you'll be able to see that as well. Cool. So here, it already knows this is an Automation Anywhere A2019 collection. Its format is uh, Postman Collection 2.0. It's importing as a collection. I'll hit Import. Cool. So that quickly, I already have all of those endpoints showing up in my Postman environment. Okay. Now. If I come down, we know we talked about the, the control room API a little bit already, but the first thing I need to do when I'm using the control room uh, API at all is to actually get that authentication token. And I do that by actually authenticating. So I'm gonna authenticate here by username and password. So if you see each of these endpoints, they kind of, they're, they're lined up similar to the way that they're lined up in Swagger. So if we look in Swagger and we looked at the authentication, it's uh, V1 and then authentication. Um, that's kind of tied together with the way that they're listed here. But we have 45 total endpoints uh, as of right now. We'll continue to add more to this collection. But the first thing we wanna do is look at the body, okay? So when we make a call to the control room uh, API, the body is what gets passed for 
us giving some kind of values to the control room for it to know, yeah, I can authenticate this person and here's that authentication token. So notice here that we've got this kind of funky language for the CR username, CR password, and then the same thing for the control room URL. So if you mouse over them, they show up in red and right now they say it's an unresolved variable. And that's because those are designed to be used as environment variables. And there's only three that have been defined for this particular collection. So if I come up here, notice it says I have no environment that's been created. I'm gonna click on this I icon and it's gonna allow me to add a new environment. So I'm gonna click on the add button and I'm gonna give my environment a name. I'm gonna call this uh, A 2019 test environment, okay? Now, each of these references here are actually references to a variable. So what I'm gonna do is create those exact same variables in this environment and then give them a value. So for my first one, it was just control, let me type it like it actually, control room URL. For my current value, I'm gonna fill that in. I've got my control room URL here. Yours will be different. It'll be specific to whatever control room you're using. If you're using community edition, or if you're using uh, enterprise. So that's my control room URL. The next variable I'm gonna create is my CR underscore username. And again, if you say, why are we creating these? Well, these are the ones that were used when this uh, collection was originally set up. That's just what I had used when I set this one up. So um, we'll just mimic those exact three. If you really wanted to use a different variable name, you could do that. You would just have to update all 45 of these. Well, actually it wouldn't be all of them it would be some of the endpoints that do have uh, variables or referencing those. And in fact, mostly it's just gonna be authentication actually, now that I say that out loud. All right, my uh, username. Actually, I'm gonna copy this because I wanna make sure I don't get this wrong. I want a screen share, I could screw up. All right, and then CR password. Uh, and just for those who are keeping track at home, uh, yes, I'm gonna put my password here in plain text, and yes, this account will be deleted as soon as this video is over. So it's not gonna do anyone any good to keep track of that. So anyway, that's my username, that's my password, this is my control room URL, I'll hit add. Cool, so I have my environment created. Now if I hit send here, it's not gonna work, right? Because it doesn't know about those different environments. So if I switch my environment to A2019 test and hit send, now we'll see that it actually returns with an appropriate response. So this is that token that I was talking about. And then I can see the information uh, about my account, right? And that's just how this authentication API endpoint works. It's gonna return to me a token. It's also gonna return to me details about that particular person. So hey, the email address is micah.smith at automationanywhere.com. This is the user's ID, their username, their, uh, it doesn't have their password in it, but uh, their first name, their last name. And then I see what roles they're a part of. And then I can also see all the specific permissions that they have. And so, you know, should they have access to lockers or should they have ac access to migrate bots? I could see all of that um, in this body that's returned. And again, this is being returned as a JSON. So you can pretty easily um, parse this in most programming languages. Additionally, there is a JSON parser and JSON object manager packages that are available in A2019 in the bot store. Strongly encourage you to check those out. Um, I use those quite a bit, especially when, <laughs> actually every single build that I'm referencing an API in my bot build, I always use the uh, JSON object manager because it's the easiest way for me to parse that response. Now, two more things I wanna point out. One, we created uh, only three variables, but notice that a fourth got created, right? And we see here that this is the token. And what was happening here is in our test script that executes right after the call is made, uh, we're creating or we're actually setting an environment variable called token. We didn't have the variable created, so this script created that automatically. Um, but if we already had it created and I, let's say I sent this again, right? Notice this one ends in QROA. I'll hit send, it gave me a new token. Now if I come up here and look at my token, um, I can go to the very end. It doesn't end in QROA, so we know that that's a new one. Um, so anyway, 
that will automatically store for me. And as I make these other calls, right, like we're gonna go in a second and we'll look at some uh, credential, search for credentials, right? When I make those, that token is automatically being referenced here. And that token is automatically being passed to these other endpoints to essentially authenticate me, okay? The other thing I wanna point out here is that if we look at our environment variables, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, when I put my control room URL, make sure that your control room URL ends in a slash, okay? That's how this was set up. That's how all of these other endpoints are set up. So that when we're actually adding to that for a specific endpoint, right, the credential vault credentials list, then it just says v2 slash credential vault slash credentials, right? So I wanna make sure that my control room URL actually ends in a slash. Uh, again, I can mouse over any of these to see what the current value is set to, but uh, just wanted to point that out. So when I look at this, right, there's uh, several kind of parent collections, and then there's a bunch of different endpoints that I can reference as I'm trying to explore what's possible. Mostly everything that you can do in the control room, uh, you can do from the API or from the web interface. Uh, I say most, it's not everything, but uh, most of that stuff is available. So if I wanted to see like the most recent logins, right, the audit data, I could come here, I could look at the fetch audit data. Again, my headers is automatically going to include that uh, cross uh, authorization. So I have my token here, but I specifically wanna look at the body. And the body here um, is pre-filled and it has some details about what's actually in there already. I can come up here to look about some more information about this endpoint. Here we also have a swagger URL. So if I wanted to learn more about this endpoint, I can reference that here. But I can come here, I see that there's a body, it's gonna show me um, audit information that's related to login and has occurred greater than um, 20, uh, December 1st of 2019, right? So if I hit send, I can then take a look at the response and it should come back with all of the login details or all of the login uh, events that have occurred since that date. So here we can see uh, a bunch of um, logins that have occurred. We know who logged in, you know, information like that. Uh, basically the same information I can see in the control room through the um, user interface as if I look at the, uh, the audit section, but uh, I can do that directly from the API as well. Now I wanna show you a couple, a couple things here, a couple highlights of the uh, control room API, and then we'll dig into doing a couple tests. So we already have our token, we're good for right now. Uh, I can do audit stuff, I can do bot lifecycle management stuff, which includes exporting uh, a bot or a file, checking the export status, actually downloading that exported file. I can also do imports, so I can import files to the control room. I can actually deploy bots directly from the control room API. We're gonna be doing another session of AI Illustrates where we build a bot and then deploy it directly from the control room API. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, I can view and modify credentials and attributes and lockers. I can get into repository management so I can see uh, different folders and different files if I need to navigate around to find a specific ID of a bot that I wanna deploy. For user management, I can see different roles. I can create roles, I can delete roles. Uh, I can also create and delete users. So if you're you know, migrating a bunch of users from one environment to another, it's a really easy thing to do to uh, do a fetch and get all the user details from one environment and then migrate those to another. I'd still need to worry about setting up passwords and them creating accounts and things like that, depending on how I have my authentication set up. But uh, you can play around with that. And then workload management API, uh, modifying and managing queues and work items and stuff like that. Specifically for this demo though, I wanna take a look at what we can do with the credential vault because we'll, we'll play around with that here for a second. And that should be something that everyone has access to even in Community Edition. So if we go into the credentials collection here, the first one I'm gonna look at is this credential vault slash credential slash list. And this should return to me a list of available credentials uh, that I have access to, right? So if we look at this, um, my account that I used has two total um, credentials that are available to it. If I go back and look at the body, we should have done that before we actually ran it. Um, here you can see that a lot of the body has been commented out. I've also made some notes here about 
how you can use the filters. And in this case, I left the filter empty, so it's just gonna return everything. But if I needed more information about how to actually use this particular endpoint, here's the uh, URL to the docs portal. If I click this down carrot, um, let's see, that's the Swagger URL in Community Edition. So you have access to those other resources that we just talked about directly from this. And, and that's really helpful when I'm getting confused or when I'm looking at a new endpoint that I haven't used before, I'll often reference those different resources to either try it out or to see a little more documentation about how's the body supposed to be formatted, what do I expect as a response, stuff like that. So we ran this one, there was no filtering. We can see that I've got a Salesforce credential. We can see that that credential has two attributes. Uh, it's got the username and the password. Again, we can't actually see the password right here. Um, there is another attribute endpoint uh, for that. So if you needed to pull back a password or you needed to set a password or set a value, you have the ability to do that. Um, but for the specific endpoint that we used, it's just returning the name of the attribute as well as the credential itself. I have another one, which is GHX. So this is my login or my username for GHX, as well as my password. I can see when those were created, the version, stuff like that. If I go here, let's see. Let's look at this top one here, create credential. So if we look at the create credential endpoint, I can go to the body and I can see that there's actually a sample credential that I've already created here. And, and you could modify this if you want to, you can use it as is. I kind of created a lot of these default bodies to be used out of box. So if you wanted to be able to just play with it, you're not gonna totally screw anything up. Um, some of the bodies may not work or some of the calls may not work because they have specific IDs in the URL. That's fine, you'll just need to update those. We'll take a look at that here in a second. So for this first one, uh, obviously in the header, we're just passing that token. For the body, we're gonna give the credential a name. We're gonna give the credential a description. And then we're actually gonna add some attributes to it. So we're gonna add a username, give a description, uh, determine if it's masked or not, and then uh, actually give a specific value for it. And so we've got a username here. We've also got a password. Again, in this case, I'm saying the password is a password and is masked. So not just anyone could come in and view these directly in the control room. So if I hit send, I should get a response that looks like the credential I just was trying to create, except notice that it has some ID values to it. So I have an ID for my sample credential, I've got an owner ID, I've got an ID for the attribute of username, I've got an ID for the attribute of password, we can see who it was created by. Um, the account that I created was uh, ID 33, so that's where we see that. If I switch back now to my search credentials, I can hit send here. Notice last time we only had two credentials. Now we can see three. That third one should be down here. We see the sample credential. We see the test credential created from API request. We have information related to the, the attributes. So here's the username. Here's the password. Uh, again, we just set those up with like totally fake values. We gave totally fake descriptions. Um, but you could use this if you need to actually authenticate or if you need to pull back a password uh, or pull back a username. You could do that either from your bot or from another application, right? If you needed to deploy a bot or update a value, you could do that. Uh, the last one we'll look at here just to make sure we're cleaning things up. Let's grab the ID. So the ID here for our credential is 30. I'm going to copy that and I'm gonna to go to the delete endpoint. So notice there's no body for this one, okay? There is a reference to the docs portal on you know, more information about it. But if we look up at the URL, it's actually got an ID in it. Now, ID 18 was just a sample one that was used previously when this was set up. I'm gonna give the ID of 30, which was the new credential we just created. I'll hit send. My response is blank here, but I'm gonna go back to my search. I didn't get an error, so that's good news, right? I'm gonna to go to my search and hit send. Now I see there's only two credentials that were returned, um, so that sample credential we created has been deleted. Okay, so just as a quick recap, that's the Postman collection for the Control Room API. Now, where would you actually use this? Well. I see this practically being used when I'm trying to integrate my 
automation anywhere environment with other applications that I already have internally. So let's say that I have a workflow application and you know several steps are done automatically maybe through that workflow application or something else. Uh, it could be receiving mail or something like that. At a certain point in the workflow, I might say this is the appropriate place for a bot to now take over, right? And so I would from that um, workflow application make a call to the control room API to actually deploy a bot. And I can even pass values to that bot when it needs to run. So maybe some context of like, all right, this is a specific task I need and you need to go look up. These are the user's details. Um, this is the specific assignment I need you to do. So I could pass those values to the bot. The bot could then execute. And then the bot could call back to my workflow application, letting me know, yep, this task is done or hey, this needs to be routed to a human or something else, right? And so if I can start to you know, find those different tasks within my workflow to identify where a bot can be a good fit and where I may need to you know, have a human to either check, validate, or do that task because it requires some level of cognition that the bot's not capable of, then I'm able to really have a mature RPA practice where I can invoke bots when they're needed but then also have um, other tasks and other work that can be totally separated where humans can continue to maintain it, right? And so that's where I see something like the control room API being of a lot of value for an organization. Let's switch back to the PowerPoint real quick. We'll finish up. So as a recap, uh, APIs allow applications to expose certain functionality for developers for consumption. As we've looked at the Control Room API, I would encourage you to creatively think about how your organization may be able to leverage the Control Room API to better integrate with existing workflow applications, trigger work to kick off ad hoc or through maybe a web form, right? I could just create a web form, uh, enter three or four values, you know, maybe select from a predetermined list of bot runners and then hit submit and it automatically goes off and kicks off that task. I could also do things like migrating bots from one environment to another. As a former COE lead, you know, I know that moving from our dev to our test to production, that can be kind of a, a tricky process sometimes because we have to make sure all those files are there and we've got all the dependencies correct. And so if I'm doing all that from an API, I can create an application to help me with that. I can do it once and then I don't have to do all this manual effort as we're doing migrations in the future. So hopefully this session was helpful for you. Um, hopefully you learned some more about the Control Room API. Hopefully you learned more about where you might want to explore on that Postman collection and use it and then take the lessons learned there to either apply to a custom application you're working on, integrating into existing applications in your organization, or even how you can use the Control Room API directly from bots to create accounts or schedule other bots, okay? Um, Please make sure to check out our social channels for more sessions like this. We've got quick tips. We've got these uh, AA Illustrate sessions. You can follow us on social, uh, like and subscribe to those contents and those videos so that we can know what you like and what we need to mo create more of. In the next session, we'll look at starting to actually create a bot and deploy it from the Control Room API. And so we'll be making another practical use of that Control Room API and of that Postman collection we just looked at. Okay, thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.